Sorry, guys. Hello and welcome to Canva for Business. So this has been a hugely requested um, training that we've had here at the Rural Woman. And I know that um, the other businesses who are looking after the Digital Solutions Program have had a lot of requests for this as well. So I hope you find this really useful. Um, I'm going to be talking through how to use Canva for business application. So um, obviously, if you just want to learn the fundamentals for yourself, that's totally fine. But uh, we're going to look at the difference that learning and understanding how Canva works can make in um, some of the documents that you would be regularly creating for your business. So I have suggested that you play along in the background if you have a second device or a second screen. Um, I'll tell you guys a bit about myself first, but um, you know, I'll let you know before we uh, launch a bit into Canva so you've got an opportunity to open it up and have a go. So first of all, my name is Laura. I work at The Rural Woman and I am the Business and Operations Manager. I also deal with the coordination for our Digital Solutions Program, which I'll talk a bit about um, shortly. Uh, my background has been a mix of things. Um, I did a bachelor's degree in business majoring in marketing. Um, I originally was actually a makeup artist and a beauty therapist. And so I've come a long way in a totally different direction since then. Um, but in my background, I've worked on business development, marketing operations manager, sorry. That is my German Shepherd in the background. Um, marketing operations manager, client servicing as well, client service manager and events coordinator. So um, what makes me tick? The things that I love are building and developing systems um, and building businesses from the ground up. So a lot of the work that I'm involved in is um, all around building businesses from scratch, which is why Canva is such an important tool because you can create your logo in Canva, you can um, create all of your business documents that you need, everything that you could possibly need to produce if you've got the skill set it saves you from outsourcing and paying hefty fees for a graphic designer um, and uh, hopefully gets you set up with a professional image which if you followed us um, along till today you would know that your brand image is obviously a really important part of um, your small business as well so one second let me just mute because my german shepherd is very excited in the background no i'm fine okay so uh, in we've got a Q&A section. So there's a chat, but use the Q&A section if you want to add some questions. I will try to address these as I go. Um, but because we are going to work through quite a lot of areas of Canva today, um, I'm not going to be stopping and answering little tiny questions about things. You can email me afterwards, and I will be sending a recording of this webinar out to you afterwards. So you are more than welcome to rewatch it at any stage and come back to me if you have specific questions that way as well. So just before we start, this is presented by the Digital Solutions Program, which I just mentioned. So it is um, there is a free program available to everyone. It is accessible to anyone who owns a small business or sole traders, so under 20 employees. Um, you just have to be in New South Wales. There is a version of this program in every other state. You would just need to search, um, you know, the small business kind of government arm or digital solutions for Queensland, and you should be able to find it in Google. But if you want to register now, I would recommend highly that you register for, if not the free version, which gives you access to all of these webinars and workshops and the recordings in the digital library. Um, but the all access course is the one that is an absolute game changer it is gives you up to four hours with your own personalized dedicated digital coach um, which is going to be a big difference for you in developing your skills and developing a plan for what you need to address in your business moving forwards to get it operating and selling and functioning online um, i know a lot of businesses have been left behind especially with e-commerce um, or perhaps booking systems or online courses. There's so much potential there. And for $45 plus GST, this is a massive saving. The program itself is valued at about $845. So um, this is heavily subsidized by the Australian federal government. And if you join using that QR code link, um, you will get um, one of our um, dedicated digital advisors from the rural woman. They are based rurally. Um, they're women and they are both business owners. So they know a lot about um, some of the circumstances that you guys are facing, um, particularly in rural areas. 
All right, so let's go. So if you have a Canva account, I would suggest that you open it up in another screen um, or on another device if you're using it. If you have the free version, um, just you should still be able to play with the features as we go. It may ask you to upgrade, but just exit out of that. You don't have to upgrade now. Um, or as I said, you can just watch along and record. This will be recorded. You can watch it later if you want to come back to it and have a go following some of the things that we're going to do. So I'm going to cancel uh, that one and I'm going to share my screen now. Okay, so I think you guys can now see my screen. If you can't, please um, let me know in the Q&A. So Canva, I know it can be a little bit overwhelming when you get in here because there are so many tools and there's a lot of pictures, but most of it is very simple to understand. The key areas of your home screen on Canva that you're going to use are this button up here on the top right, which says create a design or this search bar. Um, we, using this professionally, like to come back and edit a lot of our existing designs so we can scroll down. And the other useful section is projects where you can create folders to store your designs in. For example, we've got uh, blog assets, social media, email assets, webinar info sheets. Um, and it's a really handy place to save things that are all under one category. And I'll show you how to do that as we go. Uh, so you don't have to constantly scroll through this long um, sort of library of your existing designs. So we're going to start with looking at creating a social media post. Now, when you create a design up here in the right corner, you're going to see some hints already for commonly used templates. Now, the reason um, we want to create a design from these templates is because it's going to create it in the size and the aspect ratio that you need to be able to publish it to that social media platform. So we all know how Instagram had the um, square posts and they're still really common, um, but they also have now the portrait mode posts, you can have Instagram stories or reels, and Facebook posts can be a slightly different shape if you want them to be as well. The key um, here is to choose whichever platform you're going to be creating it for if you're doing a social media post. You can do a custom size as well. So if you are um, asked by a certain app to create an image within a certain dimension range, you can use that custom size feature there by entering the number of pixels that you want for those um, for that image. Also, Canva is not just limited to images and graphics. You can actually now create documents in here as well. So you can see Doc. If I click on that, it's a little bit like Google Docs. Um, it's an online form of um, document editing, and it has kind of the traditional tools up here um, that you can use. I personally don't use this. I use everything on the Google Suite, so um, my preference is Google Docs, but it is there as an option if you want. So um, if we're going to just do an Instagram post to start with, now you can see all the different options here. The simplest one being an Instagram post um, square or portrait. Let's just do a square one. Click on that and it will automatically open you up into a new tab um, as an untitled design. If you click up here, this is where you can name your file. And I highly recommend doing that for everything you create because otherwise you get a list of randomly named things where if they have more than one page, it can get a little bit confusing as to what they actually are. So for this one, I'm just going to call it um, Canva Demo Instagram Post. Click away from it or click enter and that will save. And you'll be able to see it then pop up here in your main homepage, uh, Instagram post there. The preview will load eventually when we've got some designs in there. So there's two ways about going, um, two ways of going about your designs. One is that you can design everything from scratch, which is great if you have a good eye for design. 
The other option is you can use the design templates. And this is one of the um, reasons why upgrading to Canva Pro is really useful because there are so many templates um, that other people have created that you can customize yourself, um, which is gonna be a lot faster for developing content, especially if that's um, one of your main reasons for wanting to learn how to use Canva. What I suggest doing is um, writing some keywords in here to try to find things that match um, designs that match what your purpose is. So for example, um, I wanted to create one that was promoting a blog, uh, one that was promoting an app, one that promotes a membership, um, or you can use something like the term sale. And you'll get a bunch of different uh, designs that you can look through and choose. This is the easiest way to create content. So let's say this one, for example, now this one is a pro template. Um, you can have a go if you're doing this along with me. If you just click on that, now it actually pops up with some different um, options here that are similar to this design that you might find interesting as well. And now I'm just going to talk you through the, the main tools that are um, in Canva that you can use. So just ignore the design for now. What we've got here is this left-hand menu, the top bar, and then there will be sort of sub-menu items that drop out from this um, side toolbar. And depending on when you click on an item or what it is, you also get these editing tools. Now, I know that feels very overwhelming, but I'm going to break it down for you so that you can understand this first before we look at any of the other types of um, design. So your menu on the left here, at the top design, that's where we find the templates that we wanted to look for. So um, think of design as the overall design of the template that you're editing. Elements is things like shapes, images, um, graphics, videos, audio. Uh, tables, photo frames, all of the elements of your design that you're going to be adding in um, separately. You can search for pretty much anything under elements. Um, you can choose, so say we said horse, we can get graphics of horses, photos of horses, videos of horses, and even audio of horses. So you can pick and choose, and all you need to do is either click on that item that you want to add or you can click and drag if you want to as well. Text obviously is text, but there are these sort of um, pre-made templates for text. So I, I don't know if you know, but looking at the way this um, sale image is set up, you know, it's got the big sale words in the middle. It's got a smaller section at the top, smaller section at the bottom. Some, it's got all of those sort of pre-made in for you so that you can edit the style of the text um, and it still kind of fills out that nice um, design eye um, aesthetic. You can also just simply add a text box and you edit that exactly like you would in a Word document by choosing your font, um, your size, colors, and all the other um, elements of editing text. Brand is something that is um, only available on the pro subscription. I actually don't use this um, probably as much as I should do, but you can set up your brand templates or set up your brand colors in particular. So you can see this one has sort of automatically um, had a look at the logos that we have as part of our business, and it's taken the core colors um, from there for us to use across our branding. Uploads is exactly that. It is uploading the um, your images from wherever you want. These can be screenshots. They can be images that you've downloaded from another photo site like Unsplash or um, Pexels, for example, or stock photos. Um, you can also upload um, logos, whole PDF type documents, uh, anything you want in here, videos as well. Um, that's your library. Draw is a little bit like paint if you want to highlight things or draw on things. Projects, this allows you to um, pop in another design that you've been working on into this design. Uh, don't worry too much about that at the moment, but for example, here's a QR code that I had um, created and it's now actually able, you can move it into this design if you want to. 
apps. Um, again, I don't use apps too much except for their QR code app, which is just heaven. So if you want to create a QR code for absolutely anything, for example, for this webinar or a digital solutions program, all of that can be done inside Canva. You just click on QR code, enter the URL, and it will generate um, a, a QR code for that, which doesn't expire. It always applies um, unless you change the actual link or the URL address. Um, the apps also, um, sometimes this will pop open when you're uh, looking for things like uh, uh, like editing of, of videos, for example, or editing photos. It's got some kind of apps in there that can help you edit um, the way that um, the, what's the word? Oh my God. Filters, edit the filters that will pop up under apps. So that's your left hand menu. Then uh, this top menu, you won't use much except for probably two features. One is resize and magic switch. So this is really useful if you've created a whole design and then you go to upload it to um, a certain document, a certain uh, project that you're working on and it says, oh, the dimensions are wrong and it wants to crop the whole image or it provides you with alternative dim dimensions that you can create that image in that will suit that particular program. Using this tool is um, really, really useful and definitely worth, again, the upgrade to the pro version. You just click custom size, for example, or change it to a different type of social media format. So say I wanted to change this to uh, a Facebook post landscape, click continue. And then I do copy and resize. You can resize this design if you just want to override it, but copy and resize. And then it allows you to open it separately. And you can see how it's automatically re sort of configured where everything is. So it still looks really good. The only thing I would do is maybe move this little text box up a little bit so that it's not going to get cut off at the bottom in any way. So that magic resize tool is really useful, um, especially when you start creating more types of content. The other tool that you're going to use up here, obviously behind undo, <laughs> which I imagine will happen a lot, um, is this share button. So sometimes there are multiple options up here. There might be a download or print, or um, uh, I think you can sometimes get like print flyers or print documents. Um, and then this share button. The share button normally has everything under it that you need. So you can share it with other people in your team who are also using Canva. You can change it so that other people can view the design inside Canva, um, either whether they've got an account or not. Uh, and you can download it. So the main tool that I use all the time is download. And you can download these designs in almost any format. So including um, JPEGs, um, PDFs, MP4s, and some designs will allow you to download it in a PowerPoint format if you need to um, absolutely use um, PowerPoint or um, other options for um, videos and audio and things like that. So that's the key section up here. If you, When you're done with your design is this share button, download, and then selecting which option. Um, just read the descriptions for these. JPEGs are good for simple images that you want to share online um, without using a lot of storage space. They're lower in, um, in file size. A PNG is better for complex illustrations or anything with transparency in it. Uh, and then obviously your PDF would be a document that you want to download in PDF format, etc. Then the last menu that we want to look at is this menu that I've mentioned here. So these features will change a little bit depending on what it is that you've selected. So if I select the text here, you can see it changes the menu slightly to allow me to change the text um, design. If I click on this background, I can change the shape and the color, things like that. So let's look at um, just some basic editing to this, ex this existing um, design, just to give you guys a bit of an idea as to how this works. So say um, I like this purple background. Um, I think it looks like what they've done here is they put a shadow over the top of the background. Now, um, any of you who are familiar with Photoshop, 
The same applies in terms of layering in your design here. So the way they do it though is with this position tool up here. So if I click position, you can move the item forwards or backwards. Those are kind of the, the most complex <laughs> you can you need to use it for basic design, or you can actually edit the entire um, series of layout of those tools, of those um, elements in your design. So for this one, for example, if I want to change the background, I click here and it looks like they've got a shadow element over the top. So I'm going to delete that. And then they've got this purple. And if I click up here, I should be able to change the background to this red or any color that you want. You can also add gradients down here uh, if you want to have a gradiated look or you can um, apply a gradient over the top. So uh, I know we're getting complex quickly, but just to show you if you don't want to just deal with block colors, if you go to elements and type gradient, you can see graphics. There's actually um, sort of pre-made um, gradients here that you can apply. This works a little bit like um, Microsoft wants to work in theory, which is that you can drag um, the shape and size of most of your elements. The difference being that it actually does work in Canva. Um, stretch that out to the edges if you want. You can rotate this as well. So the uh, rotation tool just pops up here on the side and say I want to have it going left to right, you can rotate that item as well. I'm going to get rid of that. Now we've lost our man. So let's look at the positioning and click on arrange. It looks like it's probably a photo behind this guy. So if I just delete that red, no. So it looks like the way they've done it. If I just control Z to undo is that he's actually a part of the background. So it looks like it's an image on the background. Say we don't want a solid color as a background, we want to have an image as a background. Um, go to elements again. Let's make it horses. Go to photos and let's find an image. Uh, that one's really pretty. So let's click and drag. Now there's two ways of clicking and dragging. Uh, there's one which goes like this if you just click and hold and it will just drop the entire image onto the Canva design there. Um, or if you click and drag and hover it kind of around the edges, it will snap out so that it becomes the background of the design. Um, that's usually how I use it. If I want to have a section in the design um, that has like a small image, you can just pop it in, as I said, like that, or you can actually add a frame from the element section, which will be in a certain shape, which I'll show you. We go frame, uh, frames up here, see all, and you can choose a shape or a border, for example. And if you drag that image into there, it will do the same thing. It will pop it inside that frame. You can then move the orientation of that image around inside the frame. For example, if I want that main horse head, you just double click and drag. Let's delete that one and keep um, adding any questions as I go, guys. Feel free to add them into the Q&A section. So I love this background. I just want to move the aspect of the horses over a little bit. So I'm going to double click and I'm going to drag it so it's these main horses filling the image. And another thing to remember with design is how easy is it to read. So the sale on white is pretty um, pretty bold, we can see that, um, but some of this smaller text does disappear. So if I click that um, top text box, let's change the image color. I'm going to change it into our um, business colors. Now that's a little bit hard to read here. So I'll show you some tips that you can um, use to change that. This one, let's make that the same. Um, the button, let's have the button in our design colors. And you can adjust the transparency of these colors as well. Um, so 
by clicking on this one, transparency, you can make it more clear or more solid. Let's keep it solid. Someone's just said in the horse image, can you make the white section clear to bring another color through? Yes, you can. So Canva is like a cheats tool to graphic design. Uh, you can select on your image and click edit photo. And this is where um, some of these sort of apps appear. There's tools like filters that you can apply. You can create um, special effects with them like blur um, or this one is the main one that you're referring to, which is background remover. If you click on that, hopefully that's actually removed the background. But let's see. Oops. Okay, what have I done? Let's just, I'm just going to delete the photo of the um, horses first. Let's make the background um, maybe this dark brown color. Then elements you can see recently used at the top, so you can actually drag your image in over there. Edit photo, effects, background remover, and you can see the color then pops through. Now just be aware the quality of the background remover is not always perfect, so just be aware that it may look a little bit blurry um, or the edges may not be perfect, but that's pretty good, I think, for that feature. Let's go back to just our horses. So let's make the button trans uh, a full full solid color. Let's make this line change the color. So you can see how um, anything with a color like this in a square, that means to change or edit the coloring of that um, particular item. Let's make it uh, really dark. Oh, that's only done one. Uh, if I ungroup it, you can also group and ungroup sections. Let's change the color of that one. Oh, sorry, that wasn't the one. Click on each item and edit the color. This one. And then I want this text to stand out a little bit better. So this isn't an ideal design, but just an example. If I click on this text and I click effects, you can see shadow and lift. These two are really good for making text stand out on a background that is um, like mottled in color or um, like is a background effect with different, different shades on it that's hard to read. If I hit shadow, it actually creates, and you can see by pressing control and zooming in with your mouse, it's actually created a shadow around each letter. And that makes it a little bit easier to read. You can also change the effect to lift, which creates this actual shadow behind each item of text. Or if you wanna make it really, really clear to read, click on effects and click background, and it will fill out a little background, a bit like a text box, in um, Word or PowerPoint where you want to fill the background, it will do that for this text. I'm going to do the same thing for uh, this one down here. Let's say effects and background. You can change the color of that background down here. You can change the transparency of it here uh, and edit the roundness appearance or the spread as well. So you can, it's really, really flexible in how you use it. So we did for that one, 14, 49, and 100. Let's make sure the other one is the same. You can type in 14, 49, and 100 so that they have the same design top and bottom. Now, um, if you wanna change this text, let's make it larger. You can select your text size here, or you can just hit the plus mark if you want. Um, and then let's see, you can change the spacing as well. So if I click on this, a bit like in Word, you can um, change the line spacing so it's more spread out or spread the letters out so that they're really spread out like that as well. That is a very handy feature. So say this sale one, we want to change the spacing of the letters. Let's make them wider. Uh, you can do that as well. Now, the only unfortunate side with that is it's not going to fit on one line. 
So what do we do? We can decrease the size of the text so that all fits on one line. You can also click and drag to do that if you want to. And um, like I'd said before, the best part about um, Canva is the ability to move items around anywhere you want on the screen. You don't have to have them snapping to guideline, guidelines or anything. You can put things exactly where you want. Um, it will give you slight markers for the middle or the center or when things align with something else, with another item, which are useful to use as you're um, designing. So someone's just said, similar to the previous question, can you remove the background from our own personal photos to add to a flyer, e.g. take the trees out of the background of the horses? Um, yes, depending on how complex the image is. So this image that you have probably seen of me is exactly um, what I did for uh, to get this photo of myself. Let's see if I can find it. this photo here so this actually was a photo of me and my lovely colleague at the time she's beautiful but it was also the only kind of photo I had of myself um, so I use the background remover tool so exactly uh, edit photo background remover and it should work again on this one uh, yes it has and then you've got a clear background which you can create um, any color or any other kind of um, background on a flyer for there. The only time it will struggle is if the background is really complicated and it's not obvious where the editing lines are that it's trying to cut out. So that's an example of creating a social media post. Now, um, if you wanted to do it from scratch, sorry, say we click add a page up here to create a second page, um, you can do that as well if you want to so for example say i want to make a really clean post i'm going to use that really dark color there um, as my background i'm going to add um, an element maybe of say a laptop uh, there's a photos of it let's say we want to add that we want to add some text and I really like um, this text, just click it and it will pop up. To make the computer a little bit smaller by dragging from the corner. And I wanna add our logo. So uploads, uh, that one will do fine, just that shape. Make it smaller and pop it where you like. Uh, you can also sometimes cleverly use these laptop ones to act as a frame by popping the image inside the area of the laptop, for example, and then changing the positioning. So let's change, I've clicked on the laptop position. Let's bring it forward one, oh, nope, backward one. There you go. So you can see we've got the edge of the laptop and it looks like that image is actually displayed on the screen. You can also choose elements like dividers or um, sort of background features if you like. Change the color of most of these up here with this block. Let's make it that, rotate it and change the transparency. So you can see how you can use as many elements as you want to create your own design of um, a social media post. But for example, this one was just an edited version of a pre-existing template, which is the, by far the, the fastest way of developing um, something like this design. So then say you're ready to download this design and you're happy with it. I personally am not happy with it, but we'll just use this as a demo. Share. And then you've got two options here, share on social or download. You can actually connect your social media accounts to Canva and schedule the um, your content using their own built-in um, publishing uh, feature, which is really useful. For that, you can use the schedule feature, post it directly to Instagram, Facebook, or wherever you like. 
or if you want to do it manually or you want to use this for say um, an image in your um, email newsletter you can just download and I'm going to download it as a suggested format, which is a PNG. Now, with that background transparency that we were talking about, if I were creating a design, for example, uh, like our logo. Um, now, we already have our logo design, but let's just say I want to take um, our Rural Woman and Digital Solutions logo here. Get nice and big. And I actually want the background to be transparent. Uh, you can just leave it white, but bear with me. You go share, download, and you tick transparent background, and it's gonna remove this white color. Now, if you download both pages just with images, just so you know, it will download it into a zip file. So if you don't want to have to go through the process of copying out all of the content in a zip folder and then moving it into your documents, um, just download them one at a time. Uh, let's say we download two. It will ask you where you want to save it. And then it looks like it saved it with a white background, but you'll probably actually find, see there, that preview? That's actually got no background on it now. So that can be um, put directly over any color um, that's in the background. So say for newsletters or say for websites, you definitely want to rely on that transparency feature uh, because the background may not always be solid white or solid black. So you can download uh, your social media post for this one. Let's just download the page one. Done. Download. And it will automatically go to save to your um, downloads folder, but you can obviously change where um, you want that saved. Uh, so you can put it in a different folder. Let's put it in the Aspas folder. Name it what you like, save it, and then you can share that um, however you need to. So that's an example of a social media post. So let's now look at some other things that we can develop with um, Canva. And I will come back to the scheduling tool for um, socials as well. If we want to create a flyer, now there's two ways of going about this. Say you want to develop a flyer that you actually want physically printed. We've got some here for the rural woman. Um, now there's two things you can do. You can either have it printed by Canva, they will actually print it in their own printing press and post it to you. Or you might have an external printer and you might have the um, dimensions to which you want to design. So, for example, let's go to Vistaprint. And these guys, if they've got a huge sale on, it may, may, make, more sense, may make more sense to um, actually use the Vistaprint service instead. So, let's say we want to um, do a flyer. Flyers and pamphlets. And it's going to be A6 or A5. Let's go A5. Do it flat, or you can do a trifold brochure if you want. Don't worry about um, this section here, but you know that you want to create an, I, an A5 design. We can do that in Canva. So we go create design, and we literally just type in A5. It's got A5 document. I don't want to create a document, I want to create a design. So we can go to custom size and literally just Google, if I can find my tab, just hidden by my webcam, sorry, um, A5 pixel dimensions. Uh, it is 1748 by 2480. So let's do that. 1748 by 2480. Create new design. And now we've got an A5 um, template waiting to be created. Let's use the templates again because it's really easy. Say uh, we can actually just type in flyer and you can see um, here are some examples of some flyers that people have printed. Um, that one might be a good one. Just click on that. 
Or you might click on that and then see these suggestions and go, oh, actually, I really like this one. Let's go with that one. So creating your flyer, you do this exactly the same way as you did for your social media post. Um, we want to change the image. So let's pick something that is um, associated with rural women. I love this photo of this girl on a horse. <laughs> she looks like she's having a great time. You can um, move the image around how you like. You can also flip the image. So let's flip horizontal. So she's riding in the other direction, which suits the design of this little cutout a little bit better. And the colors, let's edit the photo so that we've got um, some slightly different coloring going on. We go really, really bright and pale. You can change the intensity of that filter as well so that it's not quite so intense. Um, or you might want to uh, click see all and do it in, for example, a vintage look or a black and white look. Let's keep her nice and light. You can then edit all of the features that they've entered in here. So say they've got their company name here. Let's write the raw woman. Let's change the coloring over to our brand colors as well. You can also select by um, using the shift and click exactly like you would have done in Word to um, change the colors in bulk of some items. These ones are in a slightly different colour, so let's make those uh, maybe this palest pink colour. Then the white doesn't stand out, but that's okay because we can click on the text and select it and change the text colour to black on those. This colour, black. These icons, they've got white with um, an icon over the top. I'm going to press control and scroll in with my mouse so I can have a look at them a little bit closer. I'm going to select a color up here. Yeah, and that makes the circle that red. For this one, let's make the circle red. And you can see the blue, that, that purpley color. That's the second color for this particular icon. So this is obviously a pre built um, graphic. Let's change that over to um, white so it stands out and change this one over to our red as well. Uh, control and scroll down to scroll out. Same thing with these ones. Let's make these all in our business colors. Shift, oops. Color, red. And then you can go through and edit all the text however you want to um, edit it. You might find that this text is really small. Uh, I find that's quite small. That's a size 15, although we're on an A5. Uh, so it may not be too bad when printed, uh, but we could make that a little bit bigger. And then you might find that the um, constraints of your text don't fit. So when you're editing a design that is pre-built and it doesn't suit the amount of text that you need to put in, it can be a bit of a nightmare because you feel like you have to edit the whole design to be able to make it fit. So what you could do instead is change the size of the box that it's in, in the background, and make the rest of them all the same or close to, because <laughs> that's in the way. Um, you can change the size of your text. You can change the spacing of your text to see if you can get it to fit a little bit better. This has a bit more room. We can change the alignment. Let's make it left justified. Or we can move the title upwards a bit so that there's a bit more room for actual text in that box. Um, edit all of your information. You can move things around however you want. And then you want to actually print it. So this one, when you go share, you've got print with Canva. And you can select uh, what kind of item it is. If you're using a pre-built template, say you go back here and you type in flyer. And we opened uh, one of these that said like A5, for example, and we used that. Say it was an A4. You will see in the top right corner here, it actually already prompts you to print it with this print flyers button. 
uh, and it's a little bit quicker. It just saves you that step of choosing which um, kind of document it is. Let's um, select this one as a flyer portrait and it wants you to resize it which is totally fine if we know that this particular um, format does work and we wanted to upload it into Vistaprint we would just go share download download it as a PNG which is the highest quality download And then over here in Vistaprint, you would select the quantity that you're buying, say 50, and choose this selection, upload design, vertical. Print's a bit slow. Upload an image. Be a woman. And it pre fills in here. Now, the quality is not great on this. I would probably redo the design um, to make it a little bit clearer. That's because it looks like it's stretching it slightly. So I would double check those dimensions and perhaps maybe resize my design into the centimeter option, uh, which you can do. Um, but that's how you could use um, the flyer development if you wanted to upload it to a separate, uh, to like a, a different um, platform. Or like I said, you can go print with Canva. Let's go to flyers. Um, and it's suggested resize design. And it's filled it out um, perfectly to the dimensions of the flyers that they print front page, back page, and it gives you these nice previews of the document as well, which you can copy and paste or uh, screenshot and send to someone else if you want the design, um, you know, checked and confirmed before you order it. That's actually already picked A5 design. You can choose your um, paper copy as well, your um, paper quality, um, matte or gloss finish, um, and your quantity as well. It is a little bit more expensive through Canva, but they do ship everything relatively quickly and everything is shipped in eco-friendly packaging, which is a nice bonus. So that was flyers. Um, now I wanna show you something a little bit more complicated, which is how to do a reel or a video. So you can actually use Canva to do video editing. Um, and we use this to create our reels here at. Um, Rural woman. So again, create a design and let's create a Instagram reel. So you guys should be starting to get an idea of these key tools that I use. So using that, you know, create a design button and selecting from the menu there, um, the share button to download. Um, and obviously these tools up in this top bar are really useful as well, as well as your core elements down here. So now to do a reel is a little bit more complicated, but it doesn't mean you can't do it. If I can figure it out, then you can figure it out. Let's again look at the, um, the templates that they've got in here, because this is going to save you a lot of mucking around with editing timing and things like that, um, or where to place text and, and worrying about um, you know, how the text might enter or exit and the animations and things like that. I would always recommend if you're starting out just to try to use um, a template to edit it. Uh, let's say we want to do a template about holidays. You can hover over them to, to see a preview of what the video actually looks like. That one looks kind of cool. And it splits it up into different pages. So you can apply all five pages or you can choose just to use one page as the template. Let's do all five. Uh, and you can see here, these are the individual pages of your reel. So it's a bit different to the flyers or the, um, the social media posts that we were developing where you scroll down 
to see um, the different designs. You can still scroll down to go to the next one, but it actually creates this sort of flow at the bottom, which helps you um, look at the timing and the transitions as well. So let's click on this one. Um, and exactly like how we edited um, the other documents, go to Elements. Um, and let's type in Bali. And they've got videos. Let's look at a video. That's a pretty one. Doesn't really look like Bali, but could be anywhere. I like that one as well. So click and drag that onto the background and use that snap feature by hovering around the edge. Now, what it's done here is it's blown out the time to the full length of that video, which is fine. All we want to do is click and drag it back down to something um, kind of that makes sense. You'll notice that they've got 3.5 seconds on each of these frames. So let's drag this one down to about the same 3.5. If you drag this little bar back to the start, this is how you preview your reel. So click play and it will show you what it's going to run like. So we've got um, our background. Let's change this to Bali. Let's make it escape. Um, you can get rid of that if it doesn't suit you. And then if you click on this, you can see up here, it's got breathe highlighted. So that's the animation that's been applied to that text item. Uh, and you can change and preview without text, clicking on anything to see what it would look like. You know, it can pan in, it can fade in, it can pop. Let's make it fade in. Let's make it a little bit slower. And you can even change the fade so that it runs by line or by character character sorry let's make sure escape kind of does the same thing and you can sometimes you can edit this on both enter and exit or just on entry so it will fade in and then it completely cuts to the next screen for example um, or have it so that it fades in and out if you select both Let's change up this one. So this one, they've got a frame inside a background video by the looks of things. So let's go to element. Let's do Bali again. Videos, see all. Uh, that one's pretty beautiful. Let's drag that into that background video. And let's also drag it into this front video just to give it a kind of cool layered effect. Change the text. We can change the size of that speech bubble as well. Um, Bali. And again, it's blown this out to 5.4 seconds. That might be um, okay, especially if there's a lot of text that you want people to read. You might want to have the, the frame timing to be longer, but let's just make it the same for now, 3.4. Sorry, guys, that is something, sometimes something that happens when I'm editing videos in Canva. I have no idea why it does that, but uh, you lost me for a few seconds, but thank you for staying with me. <laughs> what I won't do is I won't um, trial editing more of that because um, 
I will um, otherwise lose you guys again. But hopefully by now you've kind of got the general gist that you edit a video exactly like, um, let me just see if I can. Uh, you can edit the video exactly how you would edit um, any other template and tweak the timing and the changes uh, the same way. Let me just share my screen again for you. Now, I won't open that one again, just in case we crash one more time. I will show you the final um, elements to video editing, though. Uh, so if I go create a design, go back to a reel. Uh, let me know in the chat, guys, in Q&A, if you have any issues, if you've got me back. Hopefully, you do have me back now. Um, so over here we can uh let's just oh we've got a we've got a thumbs i don't know if that was a thumbs up or a thumbs down can everyone see me still can i get some thumbs up please <laughs> yes thumbs up Ooh, someone's here all right let's just pre-fill holiday um we'll just apply the one page and i'll show you this so drag um to change the timing Edit all your elements exactly how you um, do normally. Uh, and then you can see the timing here as well. So you can have um, the timing of that element change uh, and the positioning exactly like you edited all your other details. And then if you have more than one page, you can add a transition by clicking on this little button in here and changing the way that the um, screen uh, changes. A little bit like in PowerPoint. Uh, then you can also, if you right click on an element, you can um, show timing and that allows you to edit when that text comes in and goes out. So it comes in a little bit later. And then you can add music. So if you go to elements, and you, um, I just scroll down normally and go to audio, see all. You can type in um, anything you like. This is all, um, I think on the pro version, everything you can just use for free. Um, so you might want happy music. You can click here on the left to preview the song. And if that's one you want, you can click on it and drag it around for the duration that you would like it to run for. You can also um, drag it like this if you want the um, music to start at a different point in the song. You can also go beat sync. Now, if you click beat sync, it will change the timing that you've set out for all of your slides so that the transitions um, and the way the text appears comes in and out on a beat. Looks really cool, but if you've spent ages editing your timing so that you've got five seconds on this slide and eight seconds on the next one, um, it can be really frustrating when it kind of overwrites all that. So just make sure when you click Beat Sync that you're happy to have all of that timing adjusted, um, especially if you've got things like text in the background. Um, audio effects, it's always good to have it fade out at the end, for example. Um, so let's say fade out in one and a half seconds at the very end. And then you'll find when it gets to about here, the audio starts to drop down. Then again, share. You can download it as an MP4 or you can push it straight to social media if you want to do that, share on socials. So have a play with it. It'd be a good idea just to have um, a little bit of experimentation time with um, creating reels. Uh, they're not always easy, especially when you're using stock um, images or stock videos as well. You are limited a bit um, versus going out and creating your own videos, but hopefully that gives you guys an idea of how to create um, a reel or a short video. You can also upload files and videos to edit. That is another um, sort of power of Canva. So instead of having to use traditional video editing apps or um, document editing or file editing, you can click on create a design and import file. So if you have something already and you just want to tweak it a little bit, using that import file button is really helpful. So 
One of the, um, the second last thing I'm going to show you is presentations. All right, so anyone who knows me knows that um, PowerPoint makes me lose my mind. Um, <laughs> so does Word. I am fully Google. All of my devices are Google. My phone is Google. My computer is a Chromebook. Everything is Google. Um, so I really struggle having to go backwards. It feels like I'm going back about a decade when I have to um, edit something in anything Windows, Microsoft um, branded. So what you can do is use Canva to create your presentations as well. So if you are ever doing presentations to um, a board or to stakeholders or to um, you know people that you're selling something to, you can do it all inside Canva and you can present it from Canva. So let's go create a design. And we're going to go presentation 16 by 9. So 16 by 9 is the um, newer dimensions for our wide monitor screens that we've got now. So click on that. And this is exactly like um, creating any other design where you add your pages down the bottom. You can um, click on these three little dots to add a page, duplicate a page, or delete a page. And you can also add notes, your presenter notes, exactly like you would in PowerPoint too. So uh, in here, the, the joy of this is the ability to drag and drop things exactly where you want them. It's not going to do the irritating prompts that PowerPoint does, you know, add a title. I don't want to add a title, you know, so and you can create a template in here um, however you want. So let's just go to design. They've actually got all of these um, concepts here that you can use. I want something really clean. So let's look at this one. Yep, love it. Let's go apply all 10 pages. And then you can edit this as you like. So the rural woman. Let's expand that text out so it fits on one line, drag it to the center. See how it shows up a little pink line to denote in the center? And we'll change that to Canva or Business. Let's make that little line in our brand color. And then slide two. Slide two, let's put a photo of me or someone. Let's put this lady in there. We're going to change these elements. You just click on whatever is already in there and edit it how you want. And say again that your text is three times the length of that because things happen. All you need to do is maybe move that line for now, shift the text up, and change the dimensions of that text box exactly like you would in um, in PowerPoint. You can also um, select multiple items to move them all together. So you can either click like more than one using the shift button and then use this group function if you want them to be locked into that um, those dimensions. Or you can actually drag your mouse across more than one item to select all of the ones in that space and shift those. So let's make our text in here. Let's make it a little bit smaller so that it all fits. Uh, you probably wouldn't want to have that much text on your welcome page, but you never know. <laughs> and uh, you can change things like your background, um, your positioning of everything so that it lines up nicely um, throughout the whole rest of the presentation. If you want to add transitions, click on the white space between the slides, double click, and you can either add a page or add a transition. If you add a transition, that's where we get that PowerPoint effect where it nicely transitions between slides. You just need to do that for every single one. So that's relatively easy. Just do it all in one batch. Uh, you get the idea. So some things will also have um, an animation. So this one, for example, it's got a pan animation for 4.5 seconds. So what's it panning? Let's see everything. Okay. So let's say we don't want it to pan, we want it to fade in. Um, you can do that and change the timing however you like. Um, or you can edit in bulk. So control A to select everything um, and change it like that. Say breathe. 
then when you are ready to present your um your presentation it's actually got this feature up here present and present full screen or present a view or you can do present and record if you want to be able to do something say like this webinar you just want to present it and record it and publish it somewhere without actually doing a live presentation you can use the present and record option as well so if you want to do present a view which allows you to view your notes and upcoming slides, you click present. And it does bring up a separate window. So you do need to make sure that you've got two screens for this. So this window is what your audience sees. Drag it to the screen your audience will be looking at and enter full screen mode. So um, for example, I'm sharing with you guys, I would have this one dragged here and then enter full screen mode. And then on my other screen, I would have the notes one, which is behind it which allows you to see um, the, oh, sorry, just got rid of it, present, present a view. Uh, you can see in the background um, that it's got like the preview of the slides here and your notes here on the right. So you do need more than one um, monitor for that if you want to do that. It is much more streamlined than um, using uh, PowerPoint. The presentation I find looks better. It's much cleaner, but um, that's also my preference. Now, the very last thing I'm going to show you guys before we sort of um, go into some questions is how you can actually create a website and also using that social media scheduling tool. So to create a website, now you might think um, website that's for designers and for developers, it's marketing people, it is. But say you've got a very small business that you just need to get the main details about what it is that you do, who you are, and how to contact you, you can do it all by creating your website inside Canva instead. So go up here, create a design again, and let's write in website. Now, when you're creating a website, um, there's two kinds of websites. Now, I'm not gonna go too much into detail, but one type of website is those ones that are just a single page that you are just scrolling through down through the sections. It might have a menu at the top, but you notice that when you press the button, it actually just scrolls you down further into the page. Canva is perfect for creating a, a website in that style. You can also create multi-page websites, but you just need to split out each page into a new design. So for example, if this is gonna be your homepage, um, you would go back here and create website again in a new one and um, change that page to say about. And then when you publish them, you'd be linking to the other design as that page. Now I did an example of this um, for um, our other business that I work for, uh, bowbirds.com. So this is actually a Canva website. So all of this is designed exactly like the social, social media images that um, I showed you guys. And all I've done is create the design in Canva and linked these items to the pages once I've published them and um, had the separate pages that they link to. So up here, we click about, it goes to similar page design just with our about details in there. Um, and it functions exactly like a normal website does. Uh, the only challenge that you might have with this is if you need complex features like you want to have, obviously it's not designed for things like e-commerce. Um, it doesn't allow you to do, do like a sign up for, um, for newsletters or anything like that. You can probably embed something on the page, um, but it is more designed to be this sort of informational style websites, which is what we created for this, um, this team. So similar thing, you can use a template already that you have. Um, in here, or you can design it from scratch like I did, um, just depending on how much effort you want to put in or if you get someone else um, to develop this for you. So um, let's just click something simple, just one page, and then you can click here to drag the size of it. If I control and scroll out, you can make that page as long as you want, and you can add more features in there. Say I want to create a sort of a banner style that goes right across the page. You can um, add that. 
then you can add text over the top. Oh, it's really big. Also, happy Valentine's Day, guys. Spending it with me. Woo. Uh, position that. Let's maybe put another kind of cool element in there. Like, um, let's do a speech bubble. Oh, that's not a speech bubble. Make that white. And pop some text in there. With your fonts as well, a little fun hack that you can use is um, if you want a style of text, like thick, <laughs> bold, heavy, you can type in the style in here and it will give you all of these suggestions. A common one that I use is handwriting. Um, and you can choose um, some handwriting stuff type font here. Let's make that smaller. Change the positioning. Let's change the spacing because it's crazy hard to read. And change the letter spacing as well. Oops. So you can create all those things and then have links to other pages of your website. If you're linking to another page of a Canva design, you just need to publish all of the pages first and then go back into the pages and create these links. The way you do that is by double clicking and then using the little link icon that appears above the text to enter um, either a URL or the URL of the new page that you've created. So for example, if I was going to link it to say Bowerbirds, um, the about page, this one has been published. You would go back here and enter the link um, that it's going to and done. And then when you publish it, that will actually work as a button. Um, that also works for PDFs, for um, flyers, if you're doing e-flyers, um, social media, anything that you um, want to be able to create, um, create like clickable links in, you can add that that function to it. Now, someone just said, how does a Canva website perform in terms of searchability and being mobile friendly? So a Canva website is definitely not designed to be um, SEO friendly. So if you're worried about how far up you're going to appear on Google, especially if you've got a more generic business name or something that is shared by other people, it's probably not ideal for you to use this. Um, it is um, OK, however, if you're really niche, like, for example, Bowbers that we're talking about, these guys um, do really um, interesting bespoke um, servicing and um, uh, co-hosting, things like that, that they're probably going to be directed to the website from another place. So I'm not too worried about how it ranks on Google. I'm more worried about um, all of the content that we create that's going to direct people to this web page. So if that's um, all you kind of need to worry about, then it's still totally fine to use um, Canva for this. Um, you can also edit the view on mobile. So what you can see here is preview. Now you can have it without navigation or with navigation. The built-in navigation is kind of ugly. Um, you need to, um, sorry, actually develop additional pages. So I'll show you. We would add a page and you need to name that page uh, oh, somehow. Somehow that I've forgotten. Uh, where is it? I think it's in notes. No, not notes. Oh, add, add title, page, add title, home. Second page, um, let's make that about. And when I go to preview with navigation, it's now created this menu up here. It is really ugly. I don't recommend doing it. The way I did it was actually to say without navigation. And I um, actually did the navigation buttons as part of the design and linked those individually. If you click here, you can see mobile friendly view. Um, and so that's your preview of what it will look like on mobile. I still think it comes out pretty well. 
Um, sometimes you need to change the order of things a little bit. So um, if, for example, this is appearing too high, you can um, group it with that item and make sure that it will pop up within that particular box, for example. When you go to publish it, now there's two options. You can publish it to um, a free domain, which is going to be a Canva domain, purchase a new domain or use your existing domain. So if you have an existing domain, you just need to be able to access your um, your like MX records, TXT records um, that happen in the background of your web hosting platform. Um, you might have someone you know that does that for you, uh, or you can purchase a domain and connect it that way. Uh, and that is how you get it up online and functioning for people to view. So that was websites. Now, the last thing that we're going to run through very, very quickly, I know it's been a long webinar, guys, um, is this app here. Click on apps on the left and content planner. And this is how you can connect your social media accounts and have um, your content scheduled to go up um, from here directly. So we've got International Women's Day coming up, great example. If you click plus, it's going to give you a preview of your recent designs and a spot for the caption and the channel that you're going to be publishing it to. So if we go, uh, we want to publish um oh sorry wrong one no nope, i don't want that one i don't want that one let's just close that okay we just want to publish uh this sale one select a channel let's put it to facebook and then you would connect your facebook account um i'm not going to do that because i will stuff up whatever um my offsider has done <laughs> but you can choose from uh facebook facebook groups pinterest instagram um or linkedin as well uh so those are the key ones if you want to use a proper social media scheduler you would just be downloading the um, graphics as um, images and uploading them into your social media scheduler i personally really like tailwind um, but i've also used a few others if you want questions if you want to ask questions on social media schedulers you can um email me off the back of this webinar. Um, this also gives you a little prompts as to what's coming up on the days, which is really useful. Um, and as I said, you can also just publish directly from your design as well. So let's now stop sharing and we'll come back here. All right, anyone got any more questions on how to use Canva or any other um, things that you would like me to cover in the last few minutes, please let me know. Seems like everyone's been very, very quiet uh, throughout this. So maybe you're drowning in information and you're gonna go back and watch this three times or um, or maybe you're all experts and this, uh, this didn't really actually help you that much. So I hope it did help you. Please feel free to um, add some questions if you have them in the meantime. Uh, tomorrow, there is a webinar that is being run by um, one of the women in our community from The Rural Woman. She's doing um, how to properly set up your Facebook and Instagram business pages. Uh, so her name is Danielle. She is a marketing guru and she's going to help you show, um, help show you how to set up these pages from scratch. Um, if you are not already a part of the Digital Solutions Program, please make sure that you do join even on the light version, as I mentioned. Um, I'll just go back to that join page um, because that's how you get notifications of the upcoming events. So I don't always pu publish every single event that we post um, that we're holding for the Digital Solutions Program online. So um, make sure that you do register for the program so that you are getting um, a a notification of those upcoming webinars uh, each weekend. I send them out on Sundays via email. So if you'd like to attend tomorrow, please feel free to join us. Um, and again, if you can't attend live and you do register, we do send you the recording afterwards. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, congratulations for getting through a very long session on how to use Canva. I hope that's been helpful. Please let me know um, your feedback. 
if you've got any, and I will send an email out to you this afternoon with a recording and an information sheet uh, for you to refer to. Thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.